Hello everybody. So, today after a lot of discussions regarding two phase flow, two phase flow the micro channels, flow patterns, how, how to detect flow patterns and work fraction. Today for uh, the topic which we are going to discuss today and a few subsequent lectures also is the effect of operating parameters. So, in this particular case the primary operating parameters which we see they are uh, the effect of phase superficial velocities, then conduit dimension, conduit uh, geometry and since it is a micro channel definitely wall properties will have a say in it. So, gradually we proceed and we find out what are the specific rather some interesting applications or some interesting influence of operating parameters on two phase flow through micro channels which to some extent can be counter intuitive as well. And uh, I will also be discussing a few salient uh, features of macro channel uh, flow as I find is relevant to this particular case. Now, as far as the effect of diameter is concerned, we have already had a lot of discussions regarding it. So, I will not be going into the details of uh, the uh, this particular uh, discussion anymore and I have also discussed in the MISO scale the d diameter effect is most significant as I have said and this slide also had shown earlier which tells you the uh, shape of the bubbles, the difference in the nature of the bubbly flow, slug flow, the smoothness of the falling film in 2.5 millimeters as compared to the wavy film in 8 millimeters and so on and so forth. Well, what the next thing and regarding the enlarged range of slug flow with miniaturization also I have discussed. Well, the next thing which I would like to discuss today is the effect of conduit geometry. Now, in this particular respect uh, as we all know that the majority of the studies they have been concentrated on circular tubes. Now, when we are dealing with macro systems what we find is that instead of a circular tube if we shift to any other symmetric vertical geometry say for example, an equilateral triangle or a rectangle or a square we find that there is not a very dis significant influence of conduit geometry. For example, the only thing which happens is in a rectangle or a square or a triangle the corners are there and therefore, due to the corner effect there is some additional amount of fluid drainage in the corner effect or in the other words if you say there is some th this creates some amount of stagnant zones where the liquid tends to get confined. Now, due to this some local characteristics or maybe slug flow is occurring in both a circular but as well as a rectangular conduit, but maybe the ranges are slightly different or maybe the slug parameters may be slightly different, but overall we find that the morphology does not change much if we change the rather if the geometric it is symmetric and vertical no matter for the shape is as is evident from this particular slide if you see that uh, the Taylor bubbles it is just the simplest case of multi phase flow or two phase flow as I have mentioned a single bubble rising in a circular tube we find that the bubble geometry if you observe it is circular in both cases a square and a circular tube it is symmetric, but in the circular cute conduit the bubble geometry is circular whereas, in this particular case it has got flat surfaces with rounded corners. And as a result of which we find due to these particular edges the bubble find or rather sorry the liquid film it finds some ex extra space to drain out. And due to this extra space of draining out due to the corner effect it can drain faster as a result of which the bubble rises faster in a square conduit as compared to a circular conduit. But other than that there is no much great effect of conduit geometry in vertical symmetric cases. The only exception which I would just like to mention today will be evident if I sh if we uh, if I just show you the a uh, video here we find that 
in a circular tube if you know if you observe as I have already mentioned the bubble is perfectly symmetric there is nothing extra that I can show here, but since it is a circular tube. So, therefore, the both the tail the nose as well as the tail it is rounded. Now, in this particular circular geometry if I just insert another rod and make the geometry annular we find that the bubble shape changes drastically. If you observe the bubble shape in this particular case you find that firstly the bubble does not wrap the tube completely as will be evident if you observe that the bubble it partially encloses the tube and there is one particular portion where <coughs> the bubble there is no bubble and liquid flows as a continuous bridge in this particular portion. So, therefore, we find that the nose is has moved to one side and there are liquid films on the inside and outside of, of all and in addition to these two uh, locations of the liquid film, we also have a liquid bridge between the two edges of the bubble extending from the inner to the outer pipe through which liquid flows and due to this additional passage of liquid flow, we find that the bubble rises faster in this particular case. And uh, so, th this was expected to be a counter intuitive phenomena, because what we observed in this particular case was that we are actually constricting the passage and due to this constriction what happens is the bubble nose instead of being in the center it has shifted to one side it becomes parabolic unlike the spherical nose for a circular tube and we find that the bubble actually it opens up it, it is no longer symmetric it no longer encircles the inner tube completely and as a result if we observe the Taylor bubble in a circular tube we find that while the bubble is rising any particular cross section can be divided into two regions the bubble and the, the circular bubble and the annular liquid film. While just on insertion of the rod what we find that the cross section through which a bubble is passing is has been divided into four regions. There is the bubble which is now kidney shaped it is no longer axisymmetric bullet shape. There is an inner liquid film between the bubble and the inner rod in here and there is an outer liquid film between the bubble and the outer rod and apart from that there is one particular po position or one particular portion where the there is liquid bridge which is falling between the two edges of the bubble. Now, we had investigated the Taylor bubble dynamics in concentric geometry with a circular rod inserted in a circular passage, a square rod inserted in a circular passage, a circular rod inserted in a square passage and a square rod inserted in a square passage. We found that like unobstructed passages we found that when the outer rod was circular no matter what is the shape of the inner rod the bubble it had a circular cross section or rather a semicircular or it, it had the shape of a crescent. But when the outer cross section was a square the squarish shape of the bubble with flat surfaces and rounded edges is evident and in all the annular geometries irrespective of the shape of the inner and outer rod we find that the four regions exist in contrast to the two regions of the cross sectional view of the bubble in a circular pipe. Now, this is something very interesting and this was very counterintuitive and more importantly what I would like to say we had expected that when we obstruct the passage naturally the bubble it, it 
faces the obstruction and it will be forced to rise at a lower velocity. But on the contrary, we found that the bubble actually rises faster in an annular passage as compared to a circular tube, number one. Number two, the rise velocity increases not only with an increase in diameter of the outer tube, but also with an increase in diameter or dimensions of the inner tube, which implies that the more constricted the passage becomes, the faster the bubble rises. Now, all these we were talking for macro systems, where as we know gravity and inertia are dominant. As a result of which, the dimensionless number which governs the, the two phase flow in, my, in macro system is the fraud number which is the ratio of inertial to buoyant forces. It can also be written down as u by root g d. Right. Now, in this particular case what we find that naturally when for inertia dominant systems when a bubble is rising, then for most of the cases the other forces are not very important. The viscous forces and the surface tension forces are not very important when the bubble uh, an air bubble, air tailor bubble rises through a liquid of low viscosity and more or less moderate surface tension. So, therefore, under these conditions we find fraud number is a constant and the constant has been obtained by different researchers in the range of 0.32 to 0.35, which implies that u rise velocity of the Taylor bubble is equal to something 0.32 or 35 whatever it is root g d and therefore, as the diameter increases the rise velocity of the Taylor bubble should increase. This definitely happens for the case of the circular tube. Now, if we consider an annulus, so from our information gathered for from single phase flow naturally what we do when we have to extend the information obtained for circular pipes for any other geometry, we adopt the concept of hydraulic diameter, which is nothing but 4 times the hydraulic radius and which is the ratio as we all know of the cross sectional area divided by the weighted perimeter. Now, what is the hydraulic diameter for a concentric annulus? We know that the hydraulic diameter d h, this is going to be equal to cross sectional area where d 2 and d 1 are the inner and outer diameters of the annulus and the weighted perimeter is this. So, the, the hydraulic diameter is d 2 minus d 1. So, what does it mean? This means that if we if we extend our knowledge of single phase flow it automatically means that the fraud number for an annulus should be something like root g d h, which is nothing but 0 0.32 root d 2 minus d 1. Right. Now, from all our experiments as well as from experiments which have been reported in literature, we have found that just like circular tubes, the Taylor bubble rises at a constant velocity for a concentric annulus as well. So, therefore, the fraud number is constant for a concentric annulus and it too also varies in the range of 0.32 to 0.35. Different researchers have reported values in this particular range. So, naturally that implies that the rise velocity of a sorry this should have been u annulus I am sorry. So, this implies that u t b in an annulus it should be equal to if it is if if the rise velocity from our knowledge of single phase flow 
the rise velocity should be expressed in terms of the inside and outside dimension of the annulus from this particular equation. If we, we have to extend the knowledge or rather the information or, or the um, which is available for single phase flows to multi phase flow systems. Now, from this particular expression what do we find? We find then the rise velocity should increase with increase in the outside diameter of the annulus. This definitely happens, but it should decrease with increase in the inside diameter of the annulus. Well, this does not happen. From experiments we have seen that the rise velocity increases both with increase of the inside as well as with the outside diameter of the concentric annulus. And this suggests that even for a, the simplest case of two phase flow, where the uh, uh, one particular phase is flowing through a stationary column of the other, in such a situation also we find that the hydraulic diameter is not a proper characterizing parameter for a concentric annulus and therefore, fresh investigations are required in order to understand the rise of Taylor bubbles in a concentric annulus. Several researchers they have done, they have done lot of experiments regarding it and several expressions have also been suggested and, uh, and then finally, it was found out that the nose of the Taylor bubble it changes, it becomes sort of an elliptic with the major axis oriented vertically and th this particular shape the Taylor bubble adopts because this enables it to rise at the maximum possible velocity. And from several mathematical analysis which can be uh, which can be seen by referring to this particular paper, people have found that the proper equivalent diameter for a concentric annulus is not the hydraulic diameter in case of Taylor bubble rising, but it is actually they have called it as an equiperiphery diameter. And this explains the phenomena that we have seen that the rise velocity of the Taylor bubble it increases both with increase in the dimension of the inner as well as the outer tube. With this particular definition the rise velocity expression becomes as shown. Well, so this was something very unique that we have observed in uh, macro systems and regarding micro systems firstly this could not be extrapolated because the first thing is a Taylor bubble does not rise in the macro in a micro system because of the diminishing effect of buoyancy and the increasing effect of surface tension. So, therefore, some people have worked on concentric annulus or rather two phase flow through concentric annulus where they have reported slug flow. It is expected that the Taylor bubbles which have been encountered during two phase slug flow in a concentric annulus had also exhibited a similar phenomena, but not much has been reported on it. Well, so next if we consider rectangular and equilateral triangular conduits. As I have already mentioned for your hydraulic diameter greater than equal to 1 millimeters, more or less people have observed that the flow morphology is same for rectangular and circular conduits for small aspect ratio, which implies nearly square cross section. Right. 
So, this people have seen. So, more or less uh, where we come across the same type of, uh, of flow patterns. The only thing which is unique in this particular case is the corner effect which I have already mentioned. But in small channels what people have seen in small channels with d h less than equal to 1 millimeters at low gas and liquid velocities under this condition what people have seen that moment we come to such small channels wall effect becomes important and therefore, under this condition sharp corners they affect the flow patterns to a significant extent. So, <laughs> this has been seen why due to the capillary action. So, the capillary action in macro systems it existed sharp corners were also there and the uh, capillary action was also there, but since the other forces were much important. So, the capillary action did not exert a very sharp influence on the flow parameters, but in this particular case we find that due to the presence of the sharp corners what happens there is a stagnant liquid which is entrapped in this sharp corners and therefore, we find that essentially due to capillary action a bubble train flow can exist even with a stationary liquid film. And so therefore, the dispersed flow pattern that used to be observed for circular tubes with disc shaped bubbles much smaller in dimension as compared to the dimension of the conduit they are replaced by a bubble train flow where large bubbles are stacked one above the other which and they are connected at the edges and they flow through the center through a in uh, through a encircling liquid film. And we find that the geometry of the bubbles if you observe this particular shape it gives. So, therefore, one thing I would like to mention instead of bubbly we have now we have a capillary bubbly flow. And if you observe the shape of the bubble you find that generally the geometry or the shape of the bubble, bubble geometry it is a function of capillary number. Where as I had already mentioned capillary number in this particular case is mu l u b by sigma l. And if you observe what we find for large capillary number bubbles they are nearly circular in shape because large capillary means lower effect of surface tension. So, bubbles they are nearly circular in cross section but they have sharp corners retain considerable liquid. This is the characteristic of flow patterns or bubble and slug flow patterns in rectangular channels with a low aspect ratio at low gas and for sorry for with the hydraulic diameter less than 1 millimeters at low gas and liquid velocities. Firstly, there are sharp corners and they, they have much significant effect on flow patterns as compared to larger systems or larger scales. Secondly, due to capillary action a good amount of liquid gets retained in the sharp corners and the bubbles flow more or less through the center with the bubble geometry being a function of capillary number. For large capillary numbers bubbles have nearly a circular cross section and for low capillary numbers we find that the bubbles are they are no longer circular in this case they are nearly flat on the channel side. So, therefore, they are nearly flat like the channel sides 
and they are curved in the corners. So, this is the characteristic which we have in this particular case. We find and this is very evident from here for low aspect ratio we find that they become flat at the corners and this happens both for rectangular square and triangular bubbles and they are curved at the corners. right? So, th this is the way th uh, any particular symmetric geometry with corners or edges influence the Taylor bubbles or rather influence the flow patterns in micro systems. Naturally, since the flow pattern is predominantly slug, cap bubbly, bubble train in whatever way you, you used to be, you wish to call it, we find that the bubble shape is influenced in the way we have discussed the bubble shape is a function of capillary number. Now, there is some very interesting another interesting uh, application I should say of the conduit shape on heterogeneous chemical reactions of both fast and slow reactions and uh, in micro systems or milli systems this is particularly with reference to monolith reactors which are very popular in automotive uh, reactor cases and in the next class we will be discussing how the channel shape influences the heterogeneous chemical reactions and uh, how this helps us in a proper design of micro reactors. Thank you very much.